present in this moment in this room feeling the totality of oneness peace Father God, we give thanks for this moment, and we ask that you guide us, lead us, and direct us so that we may see the world as you see it. May we see our brother, may we see our sister in their holiness. see ourselves as you see us. We give thanks for this opportunity and know that all 
is in divine and perfect order. We place our hearts and our future in your hands and know that all is well. story, a little joke I want to share with you, and it was titled Old Timers. <coughs> Not Alzheimer's, Old Timers. And a couple in their 90s were both having problems remembering things. They decided to go to the doctor for a checkup, and the doctor told them that they were physically okay, but they might want to start writing things down to help them remember. Later that night, while watching TV, the man gets up from his chair. His wife asks, where are you going? To the kitchen, he replies. Will you get me a bowl of ice cream? Sure. Don't you think you should write it down so you can remember, she asks. No, I can remember that. Well, I'd like some strawberries on top. You'd better write it down because I know you'll forget it. He says, I can remember that. You want a bowl of ice cream with strawberries. I'd also like whipped cream. I'm certain you'll forget that. So you better write it down. Irritated, he says, I don't need to write it down. I can remember it. Leave me alone. Ice cream with strawberries and whipped cream. I got it, for goodness sake. Then he grumbles into the kitchen. After about 20 minutes, the man returns from the kitchen and hands his wife a plate of bacon and eggs. <laughs> she, she stares at the plate for a moment and says, where's my toast? <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness so okay well today you know it uh, for some reason I sort of had some things you know I always jot things down during the week that I want to discuss and share and but nothing had really come to me um, but I knew after last evening's uh, festivities at Highland Lake Cove with Carrie and the gang uh, I would be inspired in some way and of course that happened it was actually um, a wonderful little gathering Carrie Lindsay uh, is for those of you that don't know we bought our land from him he's created anyway he had uh, he's created a beautiful beautiful uh, paradise over there Highland Lake Cove which is uh, a fantastic place he's had many of you've been there we had our ministers lunch in there last week the amphitheater uh, lots of great programs uh, just wonderful wonderful things gardens and so a few of us got together last night and we were just visioning for the future and he had an exercise uh, that I, I found um, very helpful I've actually done it before but last night it, it seemed to really uh, inspire me so much and uh, what he had us do was actually vision ourselves retired uh, in the future say uh, 20 years from now uh, the, uh, as after we've manifested our dream li live from your dream and and just talk about it so we're sitting here we got up in partners and I had a wonderful little gal that was my partner and we discussed you know where we were 20 years from now and it was interesting because I didn't know her at all uh, barely I knew she made a really kick butt 
uh, honey cake. I knew that because I've had that about two months ago at Roger's birthday party. So I knew that about her, but I didn't know a darn thing else. But she was a nurse and uh, she works, I tell you, if you ever go to Mission Hospital and have surgery, she's who you want in the recovery room because she was telling me how she uh, works with the, uh, the patients who come out of surgery and, and she's phenomenal. She gives them Reiki and she's uh, whispers in their ear and wonderful. But not meaning to digress on that, but we were talking about our vision and sitting 20 years from now and what that looked like. And it was really, really, really powerful. And, um, you know, I was sharing that, you know, oh, it was so wonderful uh, having our Namaste Center um, finished and, and being so wonderfully utilized and thriving and having kids programs and uh, great musicians coming in and all of these great uh, things that were happening there. And we were doing a lot of things in conjunction with the, all the folks at Highland Lake and it was just so much fun and what was even greater that we all were able to co-create from a space of love without any agendas without any really plans just open our hearts and and be present in each moment and and what we were able to create uh, was so magnificent better than anything we could have ever imagined or made up and that we had these wonderful families and kids who were building on this legacy. You know, we've left a legacy behind, but they were continuing it. And it was just really living in Eden, really, uh, to where it, we were able to create what we thought may have been impossible. And that it is possible to live from that space of love and peace and really caring for each other. But I also wanted to talk about, or I, I also shared with her, the recent vision is about a um, uh, elder care. And um, we sort of got into the conversation and it was really about compassionate wisdom, uh, combat, compassionate wisdom based elder village. And to be able to have a place where people could retire and grow old and be nurtured and cared for, but also be able to share their wisdom with, with the youth because there's such great wisdom we've got a great wise a lot of great wise people here uh and you know to be able to tap into that and share it so it was really amazing to come from the vision from the dream as if it's already happened uh we had created a new paradigm and way of being and living uh good food great fellowship uh, and uh you know the great thing was that we had um we were content with our lives and, and had great passion for everything we did. And it, it, it's wonderful. But that's, that's the way it's supposed to be. That's bringing, manifesting heaven on earth. Really grounding ourselves in love and peace and harmony. Taking each other's interest to heart. You know, living as a family, a soul family. And that's what we're doing here. You know, we're, it, basically we came back and said, well, what are we doing now to make this happen? Well, Harry's got his balls rolling full force over there. I know that uh, Gail and a bunch of other people are over there helping him, and we've got lots of great things happening. We're planting the seeds. We're growing spiritually. We're, um, we're really connecting with each other. It's, it's happening. So we are taking the steps necessary, but not in a stressful way, not in a um, trying to figure it out way. It's so much easier just to let go and let God, as we've heard around different types of rooms in, the, in, in this day and age. Just let go, surrender to what is. I, I've said it a million times, but I'll say it again. What a, a very simple way to live from Marianne Williamson. Two things we have to remember. God's plan works, ours doesn't. And uh, so if we remember that, we got a whole lot, uh, we're way ahead of the game. So, uh, you know, it's, it's about each of us. Yes, we're, we're here, we're co-creating a community, but also you may wanna take some time to see yourself, where do you see yourself in 20 years or 10 years or five years? What would be your ideal place to be? And, and if we create, <laughs> I know what you're laughing at. <laughs> and, uh, I can I can I can read your mind, and, uh, but to live from our to live from our vision and what what's that look like? 
because I believe that our inspiration and our passions are seeds, seeds planted there for us to nurture and grow and, and work with. So we've all got great gifts. And if we start to get into that, living from our vision, feeling it, tasting it, seeing it, it's happened. It's already done. I, you know, I find it interesting um, that I had, uh, that the vision keeps expanding. And I was like, uh, whoa, you know, it's, and it's not necessarily about bigger, more people. Uh, as I've said a number of times, Namaste Center is in God's hands, but it's more important for me uh, as, as a minister, as a minister here, to know everybody who comes here. I, I want to be a part of the community and know the group. So often people go, uh, and, and, for, and they're happy to do so, go to a church, they don't want to be known by everybody, and they, they might not even know the minister, they might not know anyone who works there, and that serves a, a purpose. But our purpose, I feel, is for us all to connect and know each other because we're all pretty cool people, you know, we're fun. <laughs> and we got a lot of great gifts, you know? So it's, it's awesome. So to be able to, to come together in that way. But the vision, as I say, growing is, I am really getting a strong hit about this uh, elder village. I mean, I, it's, it's gotta happen. I mean, it has happened, it's done. To get more families and children involved in the mix. To make it, you know, from infant to 120, you know, whatever, all and everything in between, you know, everybody coming together because it's it's part of the circle of life, and there's so much to be gained and, and learned from each other. We can learn from the little ones, and we can learn from the elders. So um, this week, you know, Barbara with her move, uh, it's and I know moving, like they say, is one of the most stressful things you could ever do, um, and. As a matter of fact, uh, Ellen and I was moved uh, from Florida up here permanently in 2011. And after seeing Carol and Barbara doing so much work over at Barbara's house, it inspired me to go down to our storage room and uh, start ripping through boxes that have been sitting there for six years. And Ellen's like, no, no, I can't handle this. I cannot <laughs> handle this. And everything I was like, no, don't touch that. And, and I'm like, I found last night a box, no kidding. Now this, it, it, was, it was a little box, and a uh, little cardboard box, and I opened it up. Don't open that. And I'm like, well, I'm like what's in here? I mean, we found some cool stuff. I mean, like sheets, we were gonna buy new sheets. I said, we don't need new sheets now. We don't need new pots and pans because we had all this in Florida. But I found this box and it had the cutest six silver uh, little cups, just sterling silver little cups and gorgeous. And I'm like, where did this come from? This box had never been opened. I said, where did this come from? She said, from my first marriage. <laughs> 44 years ago. And she was like, no, I'm like, you didn't even know this was in here. And, and so when I, I say this, I mean, it is funny, but, you know, it's all that baggage that we, uh, you know, uh, carry around in our life. And, and that's just an example. I mean, we did do a lot of clearing. And I don't know what got into me, but I was just, we were going at it last night and just moving stuff. And, and we're continuing to do, do that. But it's, clutter is such a big um it's more powerful than I think we can ever imagine. Um, I, this gal, for example, I was sitting with last night, not because she had to, but because she chose to. She was telling me about her, um, the way she and her partner live. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Uh, they have a little card table for their dining room, no TV. I don't think they have, they may have internet. Uh, a mattress on the floor, a couple little chairs, Oh, no, no chairs, um, cushions. That's about it. I'm like, cool. And, uh, and there's a part of me that's like, wow, you know, th that just feels like so good to, to lighten the load. They said, that's not what we want to spend our money or energy on. Meanwhile, they're going to the Camino for three months next year in Paris and this and that. And I'm like, you know, that, so I think that this whole tiny house movement has really opened people's eyes. And it's, uh, when you watch on HGTV, if you do that, uh, they're so cool and people are 
downsizing now what amazes me is is when you have a family of six and you move into 400 square feet and then they're going well this one's a little too big you know and i'm like happy you've got four kids here and that's not too big but anyway um, but you know it's more about living life and joy and and passion and so we can get really burdened down by the stuff but you know i read this this week and it says clutter's not just the stuff on your floor it's anything that stands between you and the life you want to be living. And I, I think that it's not just about the stuff, it's about the beliefs and the ideas and the limitations and buying into the systems that we've been taught to buy into. That's all distractions, that's all veils. So if we can let go of not only the physical clutter, which feels really good, but also the clutter in our consciousness, all those thoughts and beliefs that weigh us down, all those judgments, all those past hurts, it, you know, that's all clutter. And when we have all those, it's just like a, a, it's such a difficult veil for good stuff to get through. Carolyn May said that fear, guilt, unfinished business, self-hate, and the inability to move forward in one's life are the equivalent of remaining cramped in a pot that cannot support the next phase of growth. So we have to, you know, let go of the fear and the guilt. Uh, unfinished business, you know, it's, it's over. It's about really coming in excited for life and passion for life, what we're here to really experience, what's meaningful. Now, I don't think we have to go to the extent of uh, cushions and card tables unless you want to, but I think there's a balance in between. And I say this for myself, you know, we, all teach what we need to learn, right? We have a lot of stuff. I'm like, oh my God, you know, how do we accumulate all this stuff? But uh, one thing last night, uh, Richard, you had made a statement uh, about what this really boils down to is we can only bring to the table, you know, who we are is, is what we're bringing to the world. We're teaching by demonstrating. So we're all really here to learn how to love ourselves and I like the way you said it self-love rules and I think that's like self-love rocks you know it rules and if we live from that space you know if I really loved myself I would make decisions that reflected that I would do things that um, would would show that in, in my life and the lives of others and so if we can tap into that self-love it's so powerful and um, I also I love this mantra and I say it to myself all the time. We must live our lives as though the universe is conspiring in our favor because it is. And it is. I mean, it's for us. But we get so tripped up in all this judgment and, and anger and it, it's not necessary. We can sort of step out of this bubble of insanity and create a love bubble. I mean, that's what we're doing here. And it's like, no, we don't have to uh, the Course in Miracles has a, a lesson. I am under no laws but God's, period. I'm not under the laws, and, and I call those not the laws of the land necessarily, but the belief systems that keep us stuck and trapped. So if we can just say, nope, I'm stepping over here and making my new paradigm, and it's really awesome, and it's where love rules. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's about... Um, accepting ourselves fully, loving ourselves fully, uh, understanding that really the most powerful relationship that we'll ever have is with ourself. So if you don't really like yourself, you're going to sit there and project all your stuff onto other people. If you loved yourself truly, it wouldn't matter. And uh, so I just want to wrap this up. You know, we've got so many blessings, so many uh, great um, opportunities ahead of us and it's about going into our heart really being still and asking you know seeing yourself where would you like to be two years five years ten twenty years from now and feel that what does that look like well you know just what I do is because uh, I really I've shared this with you guys many times I really don't know what my best interests are <coughs> I have learned that lesson so I, I like, and I've tried to, I've bulldozed my way through life and I've made a lot of things happen. But you know, it's tiring and uh, it's exhausting. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, let's see, I bulldozed through that. 
made that happen and that's not what I was meaning to do. Uh, so it's about saying, okay, I had to finally throw up the white flag. And now it's just every moment, show, Holy Spirit, show me where to go, what to do, what to say, and to whom. And to the best of my ability, I do that. And when I do that, beauty unfolds beyond my comprehension. So it's about uh, knowing how spectacular not only each and every one of us are, but every... I'm spectacular, you're spectacular, and everybody else out there in the world is spectacular. You know, treat, uh, I think Ram Dass says, wouldn't it be cool if we could see each other as God in drag? And so next time someone <laughs> is really irritating you, uh, so just say, oh, God in drag is doing a really good job as a jerk here. And uh, so if we do that, it's, it's, it changes the whole ball game. We're stepping out of this paradigm into the new one. So who is it? What is it that's getting your goat right now? Let it go. Step out of it. Go to your heart and see the beauty in all things. We've got a great future ahead of us. Uh, people keep coming up to me with really cool ideas. By next Sunday, we're going to have a few more really cool things to share with you. So I'm very excited about it and so grateful to each and every person here and so grateful that you're in my soul family. So remember, peace and love prevail on earth, and so it is. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.